All right. It's Monday, December 11th, and we are live. <clears throat> Let me fix my microphone. Good morning or good day, wherever you are. It is 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time here in Arizona, and I had to get that right for all of you. So, yes, there we go. Just adjusting some stuff. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Marina Blackford. I'm a two-time breast cancer survivor, and I pay forward all the tips for your cancer journey here on my YouTube channel and in two lives a month where you can hop on and ask your questions. Uh, but this live stream is so important for many reasons. Um, one, when you're here, you can ask your questions, but two, you can bring your knowledge and support for others. So it's this safe good space for those on our cancer journey. First comment on, Jackeen. Hello. Welcome. I hope you're well. I hope you're still writing and it's good to see you again. So we're going live. All right. And just a reminder before I forget, I'm going to remind you guys now the next live is in one week. We'll do Monday again and same time. Okay. So Find your time zone, 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and 12 o'clock Eastern. So, all right. So that is next week. And make sure you subscribe so you can see the notifications on my YouTube and on my Instagram. My Instagram is Beyond Cancer Coach and Marina Blackford for my day-to-day -day stuff. So welcome. Lots of comments coming on now. I'm so excited to have to touch base with you guys now. We've made it. It's the last month of the year, December. We've made it. Um it feels it feels good. I'm I'm really excited. I'm very fortunate to be in a season of my life that feels like I'm constantly wanting more time cuz I have little kids, but yet like this is the essence of motherhood, like a 5 and 3 year old. They have, you know, Santa wishes and Lots of just everything's exciting to them. So it's a really special time. All right, Lisa, hi. You helped me quite a bit in my journey three years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, three years ago is when I started the channel. It was March of 2020, and I had these rinky-dink videos of my chemo tips. And then thankfully, I refilmed them with better film quality and better sound quality as I move forward. So thank you for being here. Chantel, hello. Um, let's see here. Eva, Eveni, Eveni, oh, I haven't seen that name before. Hello. Welcome. God bless. And, um, let's see here. Sluggish, sluggish wash. <laughs> Hi, Marina. My partner is going through chemo right now and your page has helped me so much with helping her. Thank you. Thank you for watching and you're welcome. And thank you for researching for your partner. That is Wonderful. That's so perfect to hear. So thank you. Nancy, I'm so glad I found you. I'm one treatment down and my chemo bag was right on. Thanks to you. Oh, yay. That's, I love this. Great feedback. Thank you all. Um, if you're new to the channel, you know, browse the channel. So on YouTube, you can go to someone's channel and there are tabs you can look at. There's ones that say playlists. If you click that, I have all my videos in categories. So chemo tips, radiation, surgery, it's all there for you. Previous lives, which are, are, are uh, I need to probably write the descriptions better for them because I feel like there's always some amazing tidbit that comes out from the lives. Um, so anyways, it's all there for you. Lisa, Marina, I was diagnosed day of lockdown. I'm single stage three, her two positive. So and during COVID, are we like from April of 2020? And um, your stage three, her two positive. Um, anyways, that feels like a while ago. That's why I say it that way. And so that's quite a journey. And um, I don't know where you're at on your journey, but I hope you're taking steps to just feel good. You know, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, you know, I have lots of goals for you being here. My main goal would be to find peace, though. I want you to find peace on your journey, and that can be um, very hard when you've been told you have cancer. Like, this is where I'm assuming you have been or you know someone has been. Um, now we got to find, like, peace. Now we got to find <laughs> – but first, you've been told you have cancer. So first you have to say, like, how bad is it? 
everybody wants to know what stage they are, you know, and then there's all different types of breast cancers, let alone any cancers, right? There's pathology to, uh, you know, review what's the best treatment for that. Um, are there ways to help you feel better during treatment? Are there ways to change your lifestyle that will help you beat cancer outside of chemo and radiation? You know, I believe in all of this, all of this, but you can do all the things, right? You can, you can change the diet. You can, you know, do the chemo. If you choose it, you can do all the natural things to help you with that. And then in the end though, are you even finding peace on the journey? And that is my goal for you guys. That's why I am learning for myself and learning for you all. And um, I am a cancer coach um, available to you. You can check out my website, www.marinablackford.com. It's my name. And you can book, book a coaching session there um, because I think this is the hard part of the journey sometimes is like what, you know, finding who you are during all of this. And sometimes cancer will help you discover that if you let it. There's some really good books. I just purchased one that I'm about to read. Let me pull it up here. Um, it was recommended to me. I think this could be great for somebody if you want to check out something to read. Um, cancer as a turning point, a handbook for people with cancer, their families, and health professionals. Um, this is it written by Dr. Lawrence La LaShawn, PhD, um, lots of experience with cancer patients. And, um, I'm just excited to read this book. So I can't share with you what the book's about yet, but if y'all want to start a book club, join me. Um, I'm going to read it and hopefully by the next live, I'll at least gotten halfway through it and we can kind of discuss, um, cancer as a turning point. There you go. There's some knowledge for you today. So anyways, my goal is for you guys to find peace, is to feel good, to feel like you're beating your cancer, um, but to really find peace along the way. Just thought I'd put that out there. All right, Lisa, all good. Oh, yay. Thank you, Lisa, for the follow-up. <laughs> Thank God. Um, I was diagnosed in 2020, Lisa, like I had just had Capri, my second child, um, like newborn, right? Had her September. Um, and uh, November, I would feel a lump under my armpit because I've had all my breast tissue, all my breast tissue removed. I'm using air quotes. Um, but there is breast tissue that extends beyond the breast cavity under our armpits a little bit. Not to worry you, but when you're doing your self checks, remember to start there armpits down and around. Um, and I would find a lump. And so I started chemo December 31st of 2020, which I. I smile and laugh about because I, I think you have to on this, on this ride of life, you know, the irony of it all, but I'm like, really 2020, you just want to sneak one in there. Um, but honestly, I can't, I can't put down that year because I had my second child and she's amazing. And, um, I stayed at home with my two-year-old son most of that year, which I would have never had if it wasn't for COVID. And I'm not saying it was all sunshine, but it was, um, something I would have never had. I mean, a, a two-year-old Man, they, they're tiring, but they're the cutest darn things. All right, back to you all. Let's get to some comments. Um, today, I really want to get to comments. So I'm going to start reading through some comments and then um, just kind of touch base with you guys where I'm at. So Chantel, I was diagnosed a month ago and was so afraid. You have brought me great peace of mind and clarity. I am triple negative, BRCA1 positive. Your chemo bag is stunning. Yay. Okay, awesome. Um, if you guys haven't found that video and you need it, What's in the chemo bag? Bags. I took a couple. But to know what you could take to help is like so empowering, right? That's what I really want to do for you guys. I want to help empower you on this journey. You may have to, you may not have to, you may choose chemo to beat your cancer like I did. And, um, but you want to feel like you have some control on that, right? That's, that's what I'm here for. All right, Fatima, I wanted to ask you about the effect of breast removal surgery on the hand is that that I hear that if someone touches it gets swollen other than that can use it normally, like lift stuff. Okay, so having a mastectomy, whether it's a single breast or both, I did both um, at the same time. They will at the same time if you remove both. Um, it's going to affect you right after surgery. Like you're going to have a, a lot of soreness and you're going to have a lot of trouble lifting your arms up for a solid month after surgery. It's going to be a slow progression. You're going to get physical therapy. 
Okay. I'm just saying that now because you're, you're going to need that. You're going to get physical therapy and that's going to help you get range of motion. And you're going to slowly get full movement back to where I am doing weights and everything at the gym. So I have complete control of my hands, no problem lifting. If there's any problems lifting, it's, it's probably likely more from neuropathy than from the chemo than the surgery. So I don't feel like I had long-term effects from it. Just know though, it is a very sore recovery and physical therapy will help. Karen, always good to see returning subscribers. Karen's one of my OGs. Hi, Marina, taking a break at work and caught you. Love all that you do. You're definitely my rock. So much valuable information. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, Karen. I'm so happy to say that to you, that the channel's here still, that you're still here. Welcome anybody that's new. Christina, hi, Marina. Love your videos. I'm cancer-free. Nearly two years now. This Christmas is special for me because I have a new member in my family, my grandson. Oh, that's so awesome. He will be one year old on December 27th. Blessings to you, Christina. Really lean into all the joys that life is bringing you right now. That's awesome. Liana, I finished treatment in November. Woohoo! Celebratory emoji. And have since been dealing with neuropathy in my hands. I tried acupuncture, didn't help, and sleep with gloves on to help me. Does anyone have any other tips? Um, yes, Liana, I have some tips and anybody else here. Okay. So I want you to start doing some gentle stretching for your body. Can you start doing some yoga at home? There is YouTube videos with free yoga. Um, there's apps. I love using the down dog app. Um, I'm not sponsored. I just love it. Um, well, I do yoga at my gym sometimes, but I think some gentle stretching could help your body um, with neuropathy, yoga, also not just stretching, but yoga. Yoga is a mindful practice. It's about breath and being present in your body. So you can feel how your body feels as you are doing these poses. And so I feel like yoga really helps with circulation, being present and healing, Liana, be open to it. Some yoga. Um, also if there's pain though, you might need a prescription like gabapentin. I was prescribed it. I never took it. It can cause fatigue. Um, it can be a dependent drug also. So be mindful of that when you're taking it, but if you need it, it's there. Um, and anything else to help? I feel like time can help you, Liana. Time can heal. And, um, I just wish that for you. So keep going. Um, Karen, I forgot to ask you about Keytruda. It came out a bit after my treatment ended, so I didn't get it. Your thoughts. Um, thank you for asking, Karen, because it does come up. And it was same for me. Karen and I were in similar boats probably. Um, I finished treatment uh, summer of 2021 for triple negative breast cancer. And Keytruda was just starting to roll out more than I think it's considered an immunotherapy. Um, and I've heard of more people being put on it. The goal is to get you closer to the five-year mark of being cancer-free with Keytruda. If we make it to five years cancer-free, the odds of our cancer returning is very low. Um, I was at the five-year mark when I was diagnosed again. So who knows what happened there, but I am BRCA1 positive. It's a factor, high risk. Um, so Keytruda, I mean, I'm glad they're developing and trying things. Unfortunately, I don't feel like I've heard the best things from it as far as how people feel when they're on it. So ask your questions why it's going to benefit you the most if you're being prescribed it. Um, be open to trying it. But if symptoms are too much, report that back. Our doctors need to know so that these medications um, are being evaluated. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I guess that's where I'm at. I'm not here to tell anybody to do chemo or not, or to do Keytruda or not. I'm telling you to be your own advocate. You really got to ask questions during this process. Fatima, do you have some tips on losing weight after chemo? Because cortisone made me gain about 10 kilograms. Yes. I think, um, you have to, so if you have been on treatment, especially after cortisone, right? Is that a steroid? Steroids make you gain weight, really. Um, you have to reset your body. And so make sure it's been enough time to be realistic with your goals, Fatima. I think six months to a year after chemo um, 
or treatment really is over is a realistic timeline to start setting new weight goals. Okay. Um, I like to slowly eliminate things that don't help my immune system. I like to, I like to minimize sugar. Um, anything I drink is usually just water or it's good for me, like green tea, maybe a cold brew coffee with a splash of cream. Cause why not live a little, um, you know, things like that. Um, I drink soda water. That's natural. That's not naturally flavored. It's, um, no natural flavors. Spindrift is the brand. So maybe I have that sometimes as a little, you know, something, but I don't do sodas. I drink very little alcohol. I think if you look at what you just drink in a day, sometimes you can really minimize some calories there and sugar. And then I like to replace things in my diet that just maybe are healthier options, you know, like instead of chips with a sandwich, um, carrots or celery sticks, it sounds so lame, but once you start making these swaps, it just really feels good. And I'll say I still eat the chips, but I buy this Boulder City brand that's made with just olive oil or avocado oil. So there's no canola oil or soybean oil. And I have a small amount with my sprouted bread sandwich, you know, whatever it is. So it's just, it's really just being mindful with what you're eating and making those little changes. Then after it's been six months to a year, Fatima, you could start to look at fasting. Um, you could do it before, but I mentioned fasting. I haven't talked about it a lot. There is a lot of health benefits to it. And the reason I like fasting is it leans into what's called intuitive eating. So are we eating when we're hungry or are we eating when we're bored? Are we eating because we're told it's time to eat or are we eating because it's, you know, your body needs nutrition? So I think fasting kind of helps us with that sometimes. For me, it's helped shut down the window of how often I'm eating. I like to stop eating at least 12 hours out of the day. So if I've eaten something at night, I go 12 hours from that and I won't have breakfast until 12 hours later. And then you can extend that longer into 14 and 16 hour fasts. And then your body has time to recover. So those are my tips. All right. <laughs> Fatima, thank you so much for your answers. You always clear up so much information. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Betty Taylor, hello, welcome. Oh, I just like that name, Betty Taylor. Um, welcome. All right, guys. So where am I at? It is, we're almost halfway through the month already. And that's exciting. What's coming up for the channel is in a week from now, there will be another live. So if you missed hopping on today, getting your question answered, you can join then, same time. 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 12 p.m. Eastern time. Find your time zone. It's posted on my YouTube when the live is. I'll be filming a vlog um, this week that I'll be editing and getting out. So that should be up for you guys mm, right before Christmas, I think, the 22nd, something like that. I'm going to be vlogging a day in the life. When I vlog, I try to just show you things I do throughout the day that help me. So I'll do a current vlog to catch up with you guys. Um, what else is going on? Uh, what did I want to share today? What can we talk about today, guys? Somebody asked about what foods to avoid, and I feel like I was just talking about that. So that was asked in my last live. Can you talk about what foods to avoid? I just mentioned sugar. I just mentioned alcohol. I know, tis the season. <laughs> I'm a big fan of mocktails. I'm a big fan of one and done with my cocktails as well. And I don't know, guys, it's just me, um, but it's, it's again, very empowering to know when something's good for you and know when something's not good for you. And so this time of year, you know, enjoy, but maybe don't over indulge so that you don't feel guilty later, right? And you sleep better. Um, that's my wish for you. Betty Taylor, my cancer came back last week. I am stage four now on oxygen till they can get it up. Any tips on diet? Some of the stuff I've mentioned, Betty, I think, you know, um, cold pressed juices are great if you have access to that. If you want to purchase them at the store, cold pressed juices, um, not so much your very sweet smoothie um, in a bottle juices, cold pressed. If you have a juicer, even better, great way to get nutrients. Um, I don't know, is this stage four breast cancer for you, Betty, but, um, carrots, 
are very good carotene lycopenes, anything red like beets are really, really good for you. And then cleaning out your body with the variety of what's called crucifer food. So you have celery, you have broccoli, you have kale, you have cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, everything in that category. Also really, really good for you. So if that, if you can get, incorporate any of that into your diet, very healthy. Um, you can also make smoothies. I love a good smoothie with adding some greens and blueberries and soups are healing for the soul. So soup of your choice, you know, but ideally broth based can be really good day. Hello, Marina is radiation safe. Well, that's a loaded question. Isn't it day? Cause no, it's not. No. Um, Radiation is something that can help ensure that there's no living cancer cells in an area of your body. Um, is it damaging to our, our skin? You know, um, does it affect the area? Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. Um, so we have to do the whole, what's the risk to benefit ratio? What kind of cancer do you have? Why are they recommending it? And is, you know, the benefit greater than the risk of the sunburn, the skin, you know, always being a little tougher in that area. It could be, it was for me. I chose to do it the second time and, um, you know, it's, it's not easy to do. Um, but if you have to believe in whatever treatment path you're taking, okay, whether it's traditional Western, whatever you want to call it, chemo radiation surgery, whether it's, you know, integrative with some of the stuff I just mentioned to Betty, you know, getting the good things in your diet to help your body heal naturally as well. Or whether you're going holistic and you're like, tell me all these things are bad for me. You just have to believe in what you're doing. If you don't, you're not putting the right energy into that. So as, you know, honestly, as toxic as chemo or radiation can be viewed, I still believed that they were doing something. I'm like, they have to be. If my hair's falling out, the cancer cells don't stand a chance. And it worked and it worked great for me. So you really have to believe also in the treatment path you're taking. I think that's very important. It's a mindset and put your mind where you need it to be. Chantel, hi, Marina, which city are you in? I'm from South Africa and happened on your live by chance. Wow. Welcome from South Africa. I am all the way in Arizona where we have saguaro cactus that look like this with the arms. That's what to somebody told me once. I was visiting from Arkansas. Y'all got the cactus that look like this. Um, <laughs> I'm in Arizona and I'm in um, the Phoenix area. So we had record-breaking summer. It was ridiculous. There's more days over 110 than we've ever had. Um, but this is the best time of year. Today is sunny and 72. So, you know. I don't know if there's anywhere perfect in the world, but I'm, I'm taking our winters. Karen, for all the new subscribers, please stick with Marina. She has so much firsthand advice and got me through some scary parts of my treatment, especially the mental health part of it. Karen, thank you. I think it's the huge part of it. I think it's just like, oh, back to work. Bye, Karen. <laughs> I think it's a huge part of it, the mindset. And, um, you know, sometimes when I created this channel and I'm doing these tips, I didn't realize how much my mindset is really what got me through. And that's what more people needed. You know, the chemo bag, yay, very helpful. But even just making the chemo bag was the mindset of like, I'm prepared. I can do this. I have some control in this. So there you go. Tammy. Hello, everyone. I'm currently getting immunotherapy for stage four urothelial cancer, misdiagnosed as breast cancer at first because it is HER2 positive. Wow, that's so interesting. Urothelial cancer. I'm sure there's all kinds of cancers, and I haven't heard of that. I'm going to like look it up. But um, Tammy, welcome. Tammy, thank you for bringing up something that could be relevant to someone somewhere that there's the possibility of being misdiagnosed. So, you know, really ask your questions, get your answers. You know, um, don't, if something in your gut doesn't feel right on this journey, guys, if you're just like, I feel like there's something I'm supposed to listen to here. That's probably very true. I feel that's how we, how I felt my, found my own cancers really each time. Just something was telling me it was time to go get a scan. Something told me, 
wash your body here. There's a lump. Like, I don't even know how to describe that, but I strongly believe in it. I'm trying to Google urothelial uh, carcinoma. But um, anyways, the point is, I am just happy you're here, Tammy. And thank you for sharing. Betty Taylor, yes, breast cancer within <clears throat> within seven months. Okay, so yes, Betty, breast cancer we're talking about. Tammy, love all the tips. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fatima, is radiation painful? During the process, no, not at all. Like you lay there for a short amount of time. They have all these markings they'll probably do, whether it's tape with markers, whether it's a small dot tattoo, so that they know each time you go, they line you up and they radiate only where they need to. Is that painful? To me, no. And depends how long you're doing it. I did 30 sessions. So the first two weeks, we're talking like really no pain to me. Um, I was religious with putting ointment on and aloe vera and alternating those two every day during radiation. Um, after two weeks, it could be painful to get the radiation if you have to lift your arm. And I would still even say sore. Think of it like a sunburn. So now it could be sore that it's feeling sore. That's why you are religious with the ointment and the aloe vera. Um, at three or four weeks, you, you could get some pain or discomfort when you're trying to sleep. Again, imagine a sunburn. Um, there's creams to help with that, whether it's prescription or a cream that I really like to use. I link it on my Amazon store. It's made by Camwell Botanicals. They sent me a sample and I absolutely loved it. And I love natural stuff. So small amount on the radiated area would help me sleep at night. It would get rid of the pain. So in short, it can be in the long run, but it won't be in the beginning. Fatima, does hair growth during chemo mean chemo failed? No, I don't believe so. I had hair grow during Taxol, especially towards the end of my Taxol treatments. Um, it's not typically healthy cell growth. I think those that hair starts to grow and then will start to kind of fall out again. So no, it doesn't mean your chemo's failed though, because I, I grew hair during the second breast cancer, you know, and then we still did surgery. They checked, you know, they sent it to a lab. They do up with the the pathology in it was still no cancer cells. So no, doesn't mean chemo's failed. Good question. Tammy, yes, I went for a second opinion. Oh, good. Okay, Tammy, I'm trying to remember where we were at with it. Um, oh yeah, you went with the second opinion so that you can make sure you were diagnosed correctly. Jackine, I'm on Keytruda for urothelial that went to lung. Side effects aren't bad compared to chemo. Also on Eye brands for breast slash bone cancer. Checking. Thank you for sharing. And I'm just sending so much love and light to you. You're taking control of your journey. You're on medications that have been proven to uh, diminish cancer cells. And, you know, depending where you guys are at, stage four, depending where your stage four is gone, it's, you know, sometimes I think the cancer journey. I think the focus is is important to get rid of cancer cells, but I also think it's important for you to have a quality of life. So always make sure you're still just paying attention to what you need during this time. Talk to your doctors about that and, and, and do that. Um, I'm just trying to look out for you guys because, yeah, these medications can be really depleting, some of them. Um, and I want you to feel like it's working because I'm sure it is. But I also want you to feel like, you can still do some stuff that makes you smile because it's it's so important. So important, you guys. If What are we doing it all for if we can't get up out of bed for days? You know, so if it's, if it's, a, if it's a season, it's a season, but we, we, we deserve a quality of life. How can we get there? Only you can really know your own journey. I'm just trying to guide you. You're Anna. I did full brain radiation. It's possible. I've seen it, right? Do they put that like white, like cage thing, you know, on your head, kind of like this mesh looking thing and then radiate, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a wild ride guys. There's a lot of stuff we could do that. Some people would look and go, why would you do that? You know, but it's like, again, it's like, if you want to be empowered in a journey, choose your path that, that feels right for you. Tammy, getting Keytruda also for metastasis to lungs from kidney. So again, thank goodness Keytruda is here for people that are needing it. DM, 
my radiologist recommended jeans cream during radiation. It was so good. Jeans cream. Oh, I don't, <laughs> I have to be careful when I'm reading comments sometimes. Sometimes people share some weird things, but I'll have to look that one up. It was so good. That and drinking 64 ounces of water a day. I only had minor, like mild sunburn burns. Wonderful. And jeans cream. Maybe you guys can Google that. There are some really great creams out there to help with. Um, with radiation burn, I'm um, looking more at this urothelial, urothelial thing. Um, so is this kidney related? Is that what my understanding? Interesting. Anyways, thank you guys for sharing your journey, your stories. All right. So Tammy's just validating what I'm saying here. Yes. Quality of life. It's just, it's important. It's important to mean, maintain some quality of life wherever you're at on your cancer journey, guys, because that's what it's all about. That's what it's all for. You know, you need to be able to wake up and still feel like you have a purpose, whether it's to share your story, whether it's to check in and on a neighbor, whether it's to, you know, love on your grandkids, whatever it is, find that purpose because that will be your guiding light on your journey. Um, all right. So what's new with me? What's new with me, guys? I'll update you a little bit. Um, I am, hmm, I've been a bad patient. <laughs> no, I need to follow up. I had some lab work done when I was at my last oncology visit. I go every three months to see my oncology team and we have done, um, breast MRI scans just yearly two two yearly, excuse me. We've done two since I finished treatment. So one a year, and we've done that because I was triple negative and I had reoccurrence in a BRCA1. So not everybody will get a scan all the time. I actually would encourage you don't get scans all the time. If you can avoid getting CT scans, which have radiation, you should avoid it if you don't need it. Um, if it's non-radiation scan, like an ultrasound or breast MRI, you know, just just again, go with your gut. And if your team's saying that things are looking well, then that's okay. Like put it to the side and just move on to the next thing. Um, but I have had MRIs. And so I haven't had any scans done in a while and that's fine with me. I'm feeling great. But what we do do, and I have talked about, is the Signatera um, residual disease test. And here's my problem with that test. Um, it's pretty easy to do. It's um, blood work. So they draw some blood, they send it to Signatera lab, and then they will give results back to your doctor at three or four weeks if there's a lot of... So it's testing for if there are circulatory tumor DNA in your blood. If there's a heightened amount, you might have a positive test and they might need to, do, to scan. Exactly what we're talking about. And if there's not, you get negative results and you can just go, whew, peace of mind and go on. That's fine. It's just a very heightened surveillance. It's pretty new. You guys might hear more about it. Um, ask your oncology team about it, getting this uh, test done. Uh, Natera, Signatera. Natera is the company. Anyways, and Signatera is the test. You can see the paperwork. So why have I been a bad patient? Well, because they say I'm or I, you know, I need to schedule my next one and I haven't. And it's fine. I, it's something they could do every three months. That's what the company would like me to do. I'm just not sure that I will do it every three months. So um, anyways, that's where I'm at with it. I am awaiting results for my last one still. So I'm kind of like, why am I going to schedule the next one if nobody's called me with results on the last one? So I need to be my own advocate and call my oncology team and request results from that. Um, what else? So that's that's what's going on. So that that testing is like an ongoing thing. And um, I, I'm kind of like, I know it could help some people with peace of mind, but at what point do we need to take the focus off of, is there cancer cells? Is there cancer cells? Is there cancer cells? To what am I doing daily to live a full, healthy life? And a full, healthy life to me is, is, um, well, it's a lot of things. Um, it's getting up with a purpose. Like I said, you know, I'm a mom, I'm here for you all. I'm just trying to find peace. Like I said, you know, so there's purpose for me and I find joy still in learning to cook. Like I, I am still learning to cook guys and learning to cook healthy things. And I do that with some meal kit deliveries because I am a busy mom right now. And sometimes I don't have the energy to like look up recipes and meal prep. 
So anyways, <laughs> I'm still learning to cook. So I'm finding joy in, in what I'm eating and then the psychology of it all, you know, am I checking in on myself and friends and, and everything. So my point is, yeah, I just like, what, at what point do we, do we just focus on living well and not all these tests? I think it's important. I think if we become too dependent on the tests, we're kind of losing the essence of what it is to be human. It's like learn. It's like leaning on our our phones too much. Like I mean, like letting all these smart devices do too much for us. Sometimes this is. I just need to go walk over and turn on a lamp and not have my smart device turn it on for me. You know what I mean? Does that make sense, guys? Um. So I I I I'm not speaking clearly on it because I don't want to discourage, encourage anybody to avoid medical testing. But I think sometimes we just have to follow practice, you know, intuition in living well. And that's a little bit of, that's just a little bit of where I'm at right now. Yep. Maybe it's because I am getting certified in becoming a holistic cancer coach. I'm almost done with my program and I'm just so proud of that. The work in that program, the research, the thousands of patients they've helped, very empowering to know that cancer, you're more than a patient, you're more than the medication they put you on, that you can affect your lifestyle with food and, and releasing, you know, traumas mentally. I mean, it's just really, really great. So it's probably my holistic cancer coach speaking. All right, back to some comments before I run out of time. Um, Let's go over it for you guys. Jackie, your theolial is the bladder and lining of the urinary tract. Okay, thank you. I was not like pulling up easily on Google. Mine was uter, uter. I had kidney and uter removed last December. Okay, good to know. I mean, the kidney is related to the eliminatory organs. Does that make sense? Elimination. Greta, not a bad patient. <laughs> thank you, Greta. I just feel like um, I'm supposed to be scheduling this test and I haven't called them back to schedule my next, and the you know, signature test. But um, I think I'm just, I'm just, I'm okay with it right now. I'll give it time. Deanne, Jeans Cream is a skin sparing cream made in the USA by a two-time breast cancer survivor. I never heard of it before. My radiologist recommended it. It worked well for me. Awesome. Quatrice, I love seeing you here. Hi, Marina, and also happy you took the day off and joining today's live. Oh, yay, and nice day off in December. I hope you're getting some shopping done or wrapping or whatever you do for your December. JR, hashtag Betty Taylor, hugs to you. <laughs> Tammy, oh, wait, wait, I don't want to skip down too far. Jacqueline has a point here. I do have CTs and bone scan every three months. Treatments are modified based on results. Lung lesion reduced in size, have new bone lesions, and want to learn if they have progressed further. Jacqueline is stage four. And so they're going to do more scans at that stage if you're okay with it because they're really trying to see if Jacqueline's treatment's working. That makes sense, Jacqueline. So again, unique journeys here. Just, just trust. Just trust where you're at. If it feels right, keep going. Katie, good morning. I finished my 12 chemo, but now I got the shingles. I'm really trying to be positive and work through it. I'm 47. Yay. I'm struggling with all doctor appointments full week. Uh, you have a lot of appointments is what's happening right now. Yeah, it's full. That's, that's a lot. Um, one day at a time. Um, write down your questions so you don't forget them when you're actually there in person. Because I have done that. And um, shingles is going to be when your immune system is low. That virus is taken over, right? Um try to boost your immune system right now. Rest, hydrate, you know, any supplements you're allowed to take, maybe ask, can you take a vitamin? Can you take some zinc? Can you get some vitamin C right now? Um, anything to boost your immune system would be really helpful for you right now. Quatrice, yes, more tips on remembering. It's all about quality of life. Having completed just ahead of reconstruction and plastic surgeon doesn't seem to be in tune with me or pain even. Oh, excuse me. Having complications just ahead of reconstruction. Oh, I, I don't like that feeling when you feel like you're like, my doctor is not hearing me. <laughs> so is there a nurse that they work with that you can talk to? Do they have a nurse practitioner? Maybe request to see them and get their feedback before you totally like switch or get a second opinion. You know, if a second opinion is needed, get it. But if that doctor has a good nurse practitioner that can maybe communicate with you differently, making sure that you 
your concerns are heard here, do that. Tammy, mine is upper tract urothelial carcinoma. Wow, so many different types here. Um, just, you know, this is time to take care of you. If there was ever a time to take care of you, Tammy, is now. Greta, you're a thoughtful patient. Ah, see, guys, you guys even reminded me of ways we can um, rephrase things. I am all about power of words and I catch other people sometimes and I correct them too. I'm like, no, 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 no. Say it this way, not that way. So thank you. I'm a thoughtful patient. I'll follow up on whether I want to do this test. I just don't know right now. I don't know. Right now, I'm just trying to lean into December. I'm just trying to enjoy the holidays. We ha we just go look at Christmas lights in our neighborhood every night. I have a lot of gifts to wrap. I'm notorious for that. Um, feeling like I'm done and then like having just a pile of stuff to wrap. So I better get going on that soon. Tammy, so thankful to be able to share here with Marina. Thank you guys for listening to me. And thank you for listening to that last rant there about, you know, um, mindset and, and all of that. Um, I want to give you a little tip for the holidays, what foods to avoid. I'm going to say this. I want you to enjoy the holidays. Um, again, I think the key word here is maybe don't overindulge so that you don't feel sick on sweets or alcohol because rest is very important, especially in the winter, especially during this busy season. So enjoy it. Don't beat yourself up over having the Christmas cookie or whatever it is. Just don't have 10 Christmas cookies, please. Okay. Um, that's just being good. And if you're beyond the Christmas cookies, good for you. There are so many sweets I can walk past now that I have modified having less sugar in my diet. And so it gets easier. It gets easier, guys. But enjoy this time. I love December. Um, you know, this I'm a holidays person. I don't know what you guys celebrate, but I love December. So I want to see you guys again in a week on the 18th. And we're going to talk about how you're finishing your year out. And I'm going to bring my stuff to the table too, what my year in review is. And we're not going to start with New Year's goals yet. It's not time for that. It's time to just reflect on the year. So next week on the live, we can do that. Again, I'll be filming a vlog that'll come out for you before the end of the year. And I'm just thankful for you guys. Thank you so much for being here and listening. And um, Tammy, thank you. Emily, Sarah, I'm so happy I've been able to connect with you. She says, thank you as always. And thanks also for this morning session. Everyone, if you need extra support, I highly recommend setting up a time to talk with Marina. Thank you very much, Emily. Um, yes, Emily took advantage of my coaching that I have available and um, it is there for you guys. So I will start to link that more and I'm excited to share that. So I'll see you all in the next live. You all have a great day. Bye, guys. <laughs>